it should come as no surprise to people that so many people are feeling hopeless and burnt out and just depressed from the drudgery of every day. Whenever I spend time on Reddit or YouTube or any forum, really, I see so many people who say, is this, is this it? Is this all there is to life? I get up, I get ready for work. I come home from work, tired from work, dreading work, eat dinner, and then go to bed. And maybe if I'm lucky, I'll have 20 hours in a week to myself to enjoy the things I want to enjoy, but I can't enjoy those things because, well, we're adults, so you've got chores, and you've got obligations, and you've got errands, and you've got to go grocery shopping, you've got to do the laundry, you've got to make the bed. If you were lucky enough to own a home, you have to mow the lawn and take care of all the different stuff. And it just feels like there's not enough hours in the day. And that our entire life is going to be spent working. And for many people, that working doesn't even end in a good result. You don't have a house to show for it. You don't have a retirement to show for it. That labor is all spent for someone else to be able to buy things that you can't afford. And when you sum your life up that way, yeah, I can see why you'd be burnt out from that and depressed from that. Today, I want to talk to you about how you can at least add some meaning to the suffering some understanding to it. But I want to be clear, this isn't some sort of diagnosis of depression. This isn't some easy bandage that's going to fix everything. It's not going to instantly make your life better. The truth of the matter is, I think all people have to endure some level of suffering, and as unfair it is as it is, some people get more suffering. So first, let's address why do people have to suffer? I know it's a very common question, especially when people ask, well, why do kids get cancer? Why do good people get terrible diseases while all the evil people get to run around scot-free with no consequences? It's a fair question to ask. And I'm sorry, but the answer is not going to be satisfying. But here's the truth of the matter. Jesus Christ, who is God, suffered. So when we're called to be like God, when we're called to live like Christ, that too means you will suffer. And again, I understand that that doesn't make anything better. Knowing that it's unfair and everyone's going to suffer doesn't make the suffering any less insufferable. But having a relationship with God can at least add some meaning to the suffering and add some hope to the hopelessness. Let me explain how, and this is going to be all from my own personal wealth of experience. Because I, like many of you, work multiple jobs. I get up at 4 or 5 a.m., And typically, I'll work until 6 p.m. And to be able to get up at 4 a.m., that means I have to go to bed around 8 or 8.30. That means after a long day of work, I've got one or two hours to spend with my wife to take care of any chores, errands, or essentials that I need to take care of. And if I'm lucky, do the things that I want to do. And then when the weekend rolls around, I am blessed enough to have a house. That means I need to take care of the lawn, take care of the house, run errands. Like we talked about earlier, grocery shopping. All those adult things that we wish we didn't have to do, but we do have to do. And I won't lie, there are days that it gets to me. There are days where I just ask God, why? Why this way? What grand architecture do you have that means that this has to happen? Can't it happen any other way? I think we've all experienced that. We've all been in that throes of suffering. However, for the most part, instead of dreading work every day, and being upset that I don't have access to do the things that I want to do on most days, at least understanding why I have to suffer and what it does for me helps me to appreciate it a little bit more. Because suffering brings us closer to God. It brings us closer to our fellow man who is also suffering. It helps to build worldly things that are important, like empathy, understanding, mercy and forgiveness for those who are in similar situations or even worse off than us. But it also builds us towards heaven. And that's the key here. The suffering on earth is finite, but heaven and God's love is not. It's a lot easier to struggle day in and day out knowing it's only a few more years of this and then forever of not. So how do these things that I don't want to do grow me closer to God? Well, let's talk about the big glaring one, work. Very few people are blessed to have a job that they enjoy going to every single day. As my dad always used to tell me, if you liked doing it, they wouldn't have to pay you to do it. But if I look at the big picture, me being at work means I'm able to provide for my family. It means I'm able to donate the extra money that I make to the church, to the hungry, to the suffering, to the needy, to those who can't work. It means I'm able to provide things like 
small vacations here and there, to be able to enjoy hobbies, hiking, traveling, for me, photography. And I, again, am blessed to have a job that allows me to help people. And I think most jobs, if you look at it in the grand scheme of things, do help people at some level. Yes, it's easy to feel like you're just a middle manager, pencil pusher who has no real impact on society. But most jobs, especially in customer service or hospitality or medical, directly impact other people. And yes, you may not want to be there, but you're able to change someone's life, even in a small way. And it's funny how that thought process as I've grown closer to God, as I spend more time in prayer, as I study more, has leaked into so many other things. I actually look forward to doing the dishes most mornings now. It's a chance just to sit there and either talk to God, think about making videos like this to be able to spread the message of God, and see the simple benefits. Yes, I don't want to wash these dishes. I don't want to spend what little precious time I have washing dishes instead of doing things I'd want to do. But it again helps my family. And because it helps my family, they then can go and do their job, which in turn helps provide for the family and provide money for the less fortunate, the church, and those in need. It gives it all a purpose and a meaning. And that meaning, I think, is the best meaning that it possibly can be, which is helping others and helping ourselves get to heaven. For most people, work is inevitable working a job we don't like is inevitable. That is just a fact of life of where we are at as a society, as a people, especially if you live in the United States. We really can't change that. Should we want to? Probably. But for now, we can't change that, so we need to instead adjust the way we think about things. And it won't completely alleviate the suffering. It won't make every situation better. But it will make a noticeable difference. If instead of thinking, I have to go to work today, I'm going to hate it because I'm going to be so bored or I have to deal with people I don't want to. If you adjust your thinking to, I get to go to work today. I get to make a paycheck that's going to help someone who can't buy food this month. I'm going to get to donate extra money to the church so that they can spread a service to missionaries across the world. Or even more local, this paycheck will help my family eat this month. It'll pay for the heat that we enjoy during the winter. It'll pay for gas for the car so that we can go to the park. When you shift your mindset in that direction, again, it at least adds purpose and a little bit of hope to those things. And that's not nothing. It does add up over time. But it does take time to shift your mindset. I worked a job I hated for many years, and I was miserable for a good 5-10 years of my life. And eventually I got a different job, but I don't think it was the different job that changed all that. It was finding God, finding religion, and shifting my mindset as I slowly look, work towards putting in my mind, I don't have to go to work, I get to go to work. I have to be suffering, but I don't have to be miserable. I have to do things that I don't want to do, but because of those things, good things come from it, so I am going to focus on those good things instead of the thing that I don't want to do. It made me a much happier person. It changed the way that I look at the entire world. It made me more empathetic, more loving of my fellow man, and overall a better person. So, I know you've heard this a million times, and I truly appreciate it if you've made it this far into the video. But if you're staring down the barrel of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 more years of working at a job you don't want to work at, doing things you don't want to do, and dreading the drudgery, Know that you're probably never going to change that. And again, that sucks to hear, but it's just the truth. And I know you've heard a million times that Jesus saves or just give it to God. But if you can't change the situation you're in and you know that this is going to just be what we all have to suffer through, why not give it a chance? If you've tried everything else and you're still miserable, you're still dreading all of this, you still work a job you don't like, you're still miserable every day and you have no time to do the things you want to do, Loving God is not necessarily going to change all of that, but it can give you hope. It can give some meaning to the suffering, and it can draw you closer to God. And that is a real tangible change that I think will, in time, make you happier, or at the very least, make it more bearable. We can spend a lot of time wishing that the world wasn't this way. I find myself doing that very often. But wishing for things doesn't change a whole lot. But we can take action 
And that action is a willingness to love God and change our mindset from, I don't want to do this to, I don't want to do this, but it will help me love God more and it will help my fellow man, so I'm going to do it. And that will make a real change in your life and the life of others. And I said it a little earlier, but I'll give it one more go here. If you've tried everything else and nothing is working, why not give God a try? You've heard it a million times. You see a billion Catholics who talk about it. Maybe you'll find there's some wisdom in it. Thank you and have a blessed day.